Entry-level workers are losing confidence in the job market, says Glassdoor. And they quote somebody who said, uh, I applied to over 200 to 300 jobs, no dice. So there are two things happening. There are two reasons why the entry-level jobs are getting harder and harder to come by in 2025. Uh, especially, I was, I was about to say, especially when it comes to the software development, but it applies to, I think, a lot of white-collar professions. All right, let's jump into it. So, entry-level workers are losing confidence in the job market, says Glassdoor. I applied to over 300 jobs. So let's just read this a little bit, and then I'll give you my two cents. Workers are facing uh, a tough moment in the labor market. Employee confidence levels hit a low of 44% in May, according to a new report by Glassdoor. Many job cuts by U.S.-based employees were up 47% from the same month a year before. Employers cut 93,816 jobs in May versus 63,000 in May of 24, so it's 24-25. The U.S. also added 139,000 jobs in May, slightly lower than April's 147. Entry-level employees are the least optimistic of any age group. Interview a few people. This one here, this woman, I think Janet, applied to over 300 jobs. Well, two to 300 jobs, says and she has not landed any so far. Uncertainty in the economy means employers are hesitant to open up new roles, and the low hiring environment we're in right now means it's hard for young grads to get onto the career ladder. So I'll put a link to the article uh, below so you can read it all. But let me give you my two cents. And I think there's two reasons why this is happening. Number one, the economy, we're slowly, I think, in, at least in North America, we're going into recession. Or at least everything is slowing down. This is, uh, if you're new to the job market, this is new. This is nothing new. This happens every so often. It's to be expected. It's to be expected that you're going to have changes in the uh, in the economic outlook of things. So you have ebbs and flows, ebbs and flows. You've got to expect it. So unfortunately, if you're looking for a job now, you're in one of those situations where the, the market is not necessarily uh, very good in terms of the economics. But this will change. This will change. So you just have to uh, deal with it as it comes. Uh, number two, I think AI is playing a big role in this as well. I think a lot of entry-level jobs are being streamlined away, especially like in the development world, because uh, well, AI is doing the job, a lot of the work that the uh, beginners would do. You see, AI is great, but it's far from perfect, so you need to watch over it. You, just like you need to watch over a junior, right? You have to watch over it, make sure it does things right. So now, uh, what's happening is people with experience, instead of hiring juniors to help them assist them in their task, they just get the AIs to do it. And that's what's happening now. So we see this transition. I think there's going to be an overcorrection, meaning I think there's going to be too much of a reliance on AI uh, initially, and then they'll see its limitations, and then they'll pull back, and then there'll be new job opportunities. So what are you going to do? What are you going to do with all these entry-level jobs? It applies to coders and just about well, so many other white-collar professions. As we read in the article, this woman, this one woman applied to hundreds of jobs, no response. So what is the key? Where is the angle? Well, my experience going back decades will help you guys here. So what you got to do is you got to start leveraging AI in whatever work you happen to be doing. So since this is a developer channel, we'll talk about coding and development. So number one, you wanna start becoming familiar with the AI landscape, not developing your own your own LLMs or LRMs. You don't wanna get into that. Well, maybe you do, but you don't, you don't, there's plenty of opportunity just implementing all the AIs. So um, be familiar with the landscape. Understand what uh, Cloud can do for you, what GPT can do for you, what Grok can do for you, what Gemini can do for you. Look at the models that are out there. Become a model expert. Just like a developer had to understand the different frameworks that are out there, understand when it made sense to use React or to use Laravel or, new, or use Node or Express or to maybe to go native iOS or not. You as a developer, the new set of skills is, of course, understanding the AI landscape. That's number one, because developers who leverage AI 
will be far, far more valuable to prospective employers than those who don't. So for example, I was talking to my brother who's a highly experienced developer, and he does mostly iOS development, but he's leveraging AI more and more and more in his workflow, and it's just making him much more productive. So a couple of points in my recent conversation with him. Number one, you still have to know what you're doing. So you leverage AI to do your work, it doesn't mean that you can't know what you're doing. You have to know what you're doing. So there's a bit of a catch-22. Junior devs won't be nearly as productive as uh, experienced devs when it comes to development uh, using AI because you still got to know what you're doing. So uh, what you got to do, just very quick little tangent for you. If you're a junior watching this, learn your fundamentals. I recommend a web stack. So uh, just be able to build responsive websites, understand CRUD, understand the server the server and the client model, understand uh, how databases work. Again, not an expert, just have a, a broad understanding. Because modern developers are going to be more like the heads of orchestras as opposed to playing a particular instrument. So you're going to be uh, managing all these AIs and working with them. But you can't do that effectively until you get some skills. So you learn those fundamentals. Then do what I've been saying for years. Then do two to three small little projects, install some WordPress, update somebody's theme. As you're doing all this, you learn AI as you go. You learn to use it. You understand where its strengths and weaknesses are. And in the process of learning, it's going to actually speed up the whole learning cycle as well. So that's what you do that's if you're a beginner. So anyway, uh, let's move forward. Boom, boom, boom. You're a developer. Uh, learn AI. Understand the landscape. Understand how to integrate these tools within your own workflows, and then get into, this is the crown jewel of modern development. This is the new React. Remember when React came out, everybody was tons of work for that. There's still a lot of work, but there are tons of work for that. The new React, if you will, is agentic agent development with MCP. Agentic agent development with MCP. Look that up. All the big players are using it. PayPal, Docker, and many, many, many others get into that. Why? Because if you're one of the few, one of the first who understands this type of development where you're basically coordinating uh, agents to uh, execute on jobs, you're going to be way ahead of the pack and you're going to command a lot of money as an employee or as a freelancer. So yeah, get into agentic development. That's the first thing you want to do. Uh, well, here's the roadmap. You want to take a shot of this? There you go. There you go. One, two, three. So why would you want to learn that? Because there's much less competition. It's very, for every thousand React developers, there might be one agentic developer, if that much. There might be 10,000 React developers for it, per agentic developer. Are there tons of agentic jobs right now? No, but there's so uh, few agentic developers, I think you're going to have, that's the back door. For the junior who doesn't have much experience, that's the back door. That's where you will get that job because you will be one of the few who knows agentic development. So get into that. Also, because it's a supply-demand situation, there's going to be a chance for much bigger salaries if you know this stuff. So get into that. Yeah, so that's the back door into the game. Back in the 90s, when the web started hitting the, uh, hitting the scene, I was one of the first people to get in, in the world, literally. I started... I wrote my first commercial code in 94. And as such, I could walk in, la di da with no comp sci degree, nothing, and i get jobs because they, were, they wanted people who wanted it. Not everybody wanted it. I would go into the gigs and I would say, hey, you should get a website for your business. And more often than not, initially, I would get, what's a website? But when I would find people who needed a website, there was nobody else to do it, so I would get the job pretty easily. So that's the key. So the roadmap, uh, you still need to know what you're doing, point number one. Number two, the web will be the primary delivery vehicle for AI. So learn fundamentals of the web, HTML5, CSS3, a little bit of JavaScript. I would throw in Python because Python is often used in the uh, AI landscape. So it will come in handy. As you go, use any of the AIs you prefer, you know, Grok, uh, as I said, Grok, Gemini, uh, ChatGPT, uh, Claude. I don't recommend any one particular because right now Claude could be the best at coding and then you know three weeks from now Grok could take the lead so they're all pretty they're all pretty good by the way so yeah 
But it's good to just know it. You want to become, again, you want to think of all these AI agents as tools, just like the, you had various JavaScript libraries as tools. You could have ones that you favor, of course, and ones you're not going to like so much, and this will change over time. So uh, number four, you want to learn the new agentic agent workflows. These are very specific. Agentic agent development. Look at that. And number, number five, as I said before, learn the landscape. Learn the landscape of uh, software development in 2025 using the agents, and you'll be good. Here it is again, so you can take a screenshot of this if you want. Fantastic. I hope this is useful. My name is uh, Uncle Steph. My, my name is Steph. People call me Uncle Steph. I've been a developer, a commercial developer, since 94, since I first got paid. Uh, I got heavy into it, I would say, in 96, something like that. But I've seen all these cycles. I have seen new technology displace old. And I've seen it happen a few times. The biggest I've seen prior to AI was, of course, the web. Prior to web, everybody was doing thick client development. The web came out, and the thick client developers were crying. And the smart guys uh, got ahead of the game and profited from it. So do that with the agentic stuff. Again, you still got to know what you're doing. You got to understand what basics of HTML and CSS. Do you need to know the nuances of uh, all the different tags and the nuances of CSS3 and CSSP? And No, you don't. You just need to understand the fundamental concepts. If you need to learn that stuff, you should check out my web developer course. Link below. Very inexpensive, unique, interactive. It will speed you through, and then you'll be able to hit the AI landscape running. and It'll be fantastic for you. All right, I hope that's useful. I think, in closing, uh, do not despair if you're new. I think if you follow my advice, this will be one of the most, uh, one of the biggest opportunities for people in a long, long time. So jump on it, jump on it early. Uh, first goers always do best, of course, and uh, you'll be fine. All right, if you disagree with anything I have to say in this video, please leave a comment below. If you like these videos where I talk about the career and coding and where it's going, let me know in the comments below. If you think my hair is way too long, it's getting in the way, let me know in the comments below. Let me know what you think of this new cinema lens, new uh, uh, anamorphic lens I'm just playing with here. All right, cheers. Cheers.